shut up compressor. In the ongoing, very slow march towards putting bare metal down on the bottom of the P47, last night I went ahead and primed it with some Mr. Surfacer 1200. The stuff is a bit thicker than what I normally use, and the purpose of that is basically to help unify the surface and get a nice, smooth coat across. And this stuff is already smooth, but then when you hit it with, you know, 1500 grit sanding sponge, it turns much smoother. However, there are still a few little trouble spots that need attention. So one particularly frustrating one is right back here. From certain angles, you can see there's still like a slight lift going on. There's also this gap here that I, I think I might just have to let that one stand. I'm not quite sure how to get to it. And then there's a little tiny one here. Uh, the benefits of having a gray primer for once is seeing that little tiny split right there that needs to be dealt with. Up here by the center line sway braces, right in this spot right here, there's a little bit of roughness that I'm not too happy with. Uh, and then I stupidly stuck my finger into not quite cured primer right over here. So a few small areas that still need attention. There's also, let's see if I can make it show up on this. Maybe not. Well, right in here, there's still a little rough patch in the leading edge of the wing that needs to be corrected. So it's almost there, almost there. But we still have a little bit of annoying cleanup that has to happen. Up top, things are looking pretty good. And we are, again, almost ready. So time to do a bit more cleanup. Okay, so once again, I've been doing some work off camera and I figure we are getting so close to being able to throw paint that it's probably worth time to stop and check in again. So as you can see, the plane is black now. Top and bottom. Now down here and then on the leading edges of the wings up here, it got a good coat of Mr. Surfacer 1200 first. Uh, 1200 is great for sort of unifying things and smoothing out any weirdness, covering up any tiny micro kit texture, that sort of a thing. That got sanded down with some Tamiya 1500 grit sanding sponge, and then on top of that, I sprayed the Steinle Res, which will also get smoothed down and polished, especially on the bottom. So up top, everything is going pretty nicely, except when I went to install the windscreen. So I built this same-ish kit, I built the D, um, about a decade ago, and I remember everything on it going amazingly well. Now, I was much newer to my modeling journey at the time, and to be honest, um, my tastes probably were a bit primitive. <laughs> uh, I had come off the old monogram jug where the decals had just completely screwed me over. So, I mean, they literally like turned brittle and crack. It was, it was weird. Um, anyway, I built the Tamiya jug right after that and was blown away by everything. The fit was amazing, all that. And so when I went to install the windscreen on this thing, I was shocked at how bad it was. Uh, basically gaps on either side and the front sitting proud of the fuselage. And I thought, have I, like, am I falling apart? Am I not able to do shit I was able to do a decade ago? What the hell is happening here? Then I went and looked at uh, Hairless Joe, the jug I built back then, and there are gaps on the side of the windscreen, and the front of it sits proud. And so it's not that that went better, it's that I didn't notice it. <laughs> um, so I guess that, that points to I've either become more discerning or more critical uh, in my time modeling, which, you know, take that what you will. Anyway, that meant that I needed to do something about the windscreen, so... Uh, um, working around clear parts is always a, a super treat. I think one of the best innovations of the last 15 or so years in terms of kit design has been the trend to take the windscreen and incorporate part of the fuselage around it so that when you glue it in, you know, maybe you're gluing a whole big chunk of it. So on a jug, it could be, you can see this brake line right here in front of the cockpit all the way up here. 
and then all the way, you know, do the same thing on this side. You got the same line over here. Like something like that would give you a lot more room to work with. That's not what happened. So this kit was before all that started. But if you look at like, to me, a spit, you know, their big Spitfire, their big Corsair. Um, a lot of the Edward kits are doing this nowadays. It's just super convenient and it makes working with this stuff a lot easier. To me, it did not do this back in, what was it, 2000, I think, is when they made this kit, something like that. So, yeah. Um, this required some filling around the sides and being super careful not to fuck with the windscreen. So I used 3M Super Red Putty. So there's Actor Red, which is one of their nitrocellulose putties. Uh, it's the middle of the range. There's Green, which sets super fast. Um, red, which is sort of the middle tier, and then I think it's white nowadays is the longest curing. And they're all sort of like putties that you would expect that you've probably used before. They're very Bondo-esque. Uh, but then they also make this thing called Super Red Putty. And here it is 24 hours later. Uh, Super Red Putty is much thinner than the Acrylls. And it, I would say it's almost between like a putty and like Mr. Surfacer 500. Uh, it, you know, if you turn the tube over, it flows out. You don't have to squeeze it out like toothpaste. And one thing I really like about it is it gives you a longer working time. And because it's more liquidy and not so much of a paste or like a, a jelly, I don't know. Because it is more liquid and because it does have that w longer working time, you don't really have to thin it with lacquer thinner much to make it do anything. It, you know, you can kind of keep it going a bit longer that way. But basically, it makes it a lot easier to get micro amounts where you want them without building up a whole big slush and slurry of crap you have to deal with later. So over, I think it's been two nights now, um, it's a matter of coming in here, adding a little bit, removing a little bit with lacquer thinner on a Q-tip or on do one of these silicone brushes, which are great for scraping that stuff away without digging into crevices the way that uh, the way that Q-tip can. Anyway, doing that until I got enough buildup to where I was happy and then coming in with sanding stick and some 600 grit and 1000 grit sanding sponges and finally a fiberglass pen to sort of smooth everything out. And I think we're in a place where everything is happy. So now what needs to happen is you need to mask off the cockpit here. Spray the cockpit green dull dark green back here on the canopy rail and restore it up here around the windscreen. Now once I do that, then I can mask off back here too and we can shoot the rest of the Steinal Res, get everything happy here, make sure we're good. And then we can start with <laughs> um, the process of sanding and polishing out the lower fuselage. Now if you're curious what this looks like, it's pretty awesome. So let me find my 1500 chunk. It's laying around here somewhere. Okay, so basically 1500, you know, this one's been used a lot, so it's got a lot of the worst of it taken off, which is actually really good for our purposes. So then you just come in here, very lightly, sand this down. And you can see it's starting to sheen up a bit, right? This is basically what we want to do. We want to smooth it out because Steinal Res goes down, sucks into details, and then dries to this really pretty smooth, but rather matte finish. And if we're going to do metallics, that's not going to work. But coming in here, I'm doing this sort of polishing sand works wonders for opening it up and turning it into a great tool for all kinds of bare metal adventures. This is actually how I did the uh, cowl and tail on the jug. Although I think I may have sprayed gloss on top of it and I'm contemplating not doing that this time because the cowl actually worked out pretty well. But then you come in with the buffing wheel This does a much faster job than I could do with like a buffing cloth, 
but you can see how gorgeously smooth it gets. So the idea is to do that and then come in and do some um, Mr. Paint in places, basically dark grays, almost blacks, um, things like that, like in my bare metal variants testing, and use those to build up some variants, different panels, you know, some wear and tear in areas, things like that. Do this one more time. Maybe hit it with some X100. I'm not sure yet. Oh, excuse me. Not sure yet. And then do the K colors. Up top, once it has the primer in place and once everything is masked, um, I am leaning toward doing the insignias on the side first because they freak me out. Um, having to deal with the, with the outlet doors right there, that's always a good time. And I want to go ahead and get them done and then put the tails on afterwards. Tails are going to take some tricky masking because the, let's see if you can see here. So the fillet going all the way back to about the base of the tail to where you can see there's like a little, come on, focus, you piece of shit. Focus up here. There you go. So you can see right up here, there's a little rivet line thing that is a stiffener sort of attachment point for the fillet it comes down to here and then it comes across out to the tail and that sort of entire leading portion of the tail there is also bare metal so that's a lot to deal with masking wise and I want to get these installed before I do that so I don't have to deal with marring any of it. But at the same time, working with stencils and masks and stuff in this area, having the tail here really gets in the way, especially for like the fuselage codes and things like that. So that's the idea. Get the bare metal done. Come up here, do the sides with the major masks. Um, maybe even do up here. That could be interesting to see how that goes. Um, Oh, maybe I'll do all the masks before I move into the main paint scheme. Who knows? So do all that, mask them over, then do the camo up here, mask all of that over, then do the tail fillet, the leading edges of the tails. And at that point, we should be uh, in a good place to say, hey, we painted a thing. So that is that. I'm going to get on with masking off the cockpit, which is a really really exciting task that I don't think anybody really gives a fuck about. So once I get that done and once I get the um, the dark dull green masked up there or painted up there at least, we'll come back and we'll start having some fun. So we're finally to the point where we start to... Jesus. So we're finally to the point where we get to start throwing actual paint at the jug. Now granted, it's still not final colors or any of that kind of stuff. This is all about getting some variance in the bare metal coat. And so we'll be using a mix of dark gray slash almost blacks to basically model and marble the undersides up and the sides where the bare metal will be just a little bit so that when we put the K colors down, everything looks nice and amazing. Now, if this all seems crazy and haven't seen it before, I recommend going and checking out my uh, bare metal variants videos, which played around with this with a slightly different paint system, but the same general idea applies. And what am I doing? I don't want to start with AMT. I want to start with night camo. So this night camouflage black, if you don't have it, get it. Um, it is a great almost black. It's a little bit lighter and slightly cool tone to it. You can kind of see right there. Uh, it's great for things like instrument panel combings. Son of a bitch. Dropped one of my pipettes. But yeah, like I was saying, it's great for instrument panel combings and other things where you want it to be to look black, but maybe not quite be black. It's also great for building in some variation to a black scheme. And I'm hoping it will work out well for the sort of variance that we want to bake in. 
funny about putting dark grays and blacks on black is it can be very hard to see. So my apologies. be using a lot of these sort of random stencils to really help this along. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. I don't know why this one went all like this on me, but it did. Because we were basically firing for effect on this, um, we don't necessarily need to get super in the weeds on any specific patterns or anything like that. And I can tell just from looking at the screen, this is probably hard as shit for anybody to follow. So let me zoom in. We can move the jug around instead of trying to see the whole thing. There's the ugly fix on the back of the fuselage. Lovely. All right, so you can see right there, I've got some kind of grodiness going on. Actually, the fact that it's curved does help cover the central spine portion of the fuel, central underside of the fuselage, I should say. Give some of these things just different tones in general. You can see these little, tiny, very slightly different contrast areas. It's exactly what we're going for. This is probably the most subtle of the ones that we're doing, so I'm comfortable kind of going a bit more broad based with it. So yeah, you can get what's going on here with the uh, with the night camo black. Let me finish this up, and then we will come back and start picking up the other tones. Okay, now we're moving into dark gray FS thirty six zero seventy six. Kind of doing the same thing. hope with this, again, is to get that sort of nice, very slight surface variation so that we get some interesting effects when we do the bare metal. Mm. 
trying to sort of get it along where... It's the problem with these things with edges. It's getting into these little wing root areas. It's a little bit tricky. Freehand some stuff in here. Outer wing time. There's not that much to it. It's just a matter of building up a couple different layers of this stuff. And then we're going to gloss it and we're going to paint it. Every now and then picking out a couple of these little individual boxes and stuff. Just giving them their own weight, their own separation from the main stuff that's happening. Probably vanish under the K colors, but little bit will be good. Now it's time for some AMT 12. So if the if this is more of like a purplish gray, this is much more of a warmer gray, so. Shifting tones. And I'm almost tempted to bring in some of the uh, SCC-14, but I think we'll be okay with what we're doing. All right. Back to stencil time. all kinds of deliciousness going on on this thing now. Do the same on the leading edges. Okay. 
A curious thing about the P47M and the leading edges, you have these panel lines that kind of break here, but the bare metal edge follows exactly the line of the ammo doors all the way across. Good news is, thankfully we have the ammo doors and they provide the masking line that we need to follow. So, not too bad. All right, let's get around here to the tail and the fillet. I decided to glue the tails on because didn't want to stress about alignment and glue and paint all at the same time. I think I'll leave the fillet alone with this color. I can do something a little bit different from the tails because it's supposed to be newer. <clears throat> the M's originally shipped <clears throat> without the fillet. So some of them got it painted. Every single shot I've got a fireball that shows it, which is a whopping two, uh, shows the fillet unpainted. So here we are with the dirtied up underside. It's a little bit tough to see what's really going on with the direct light from overhead. When you start moving it, you can see there's a lot of tiny little mischief that's going to have some fun with the bare metal. Okay, now it's time to put a clear coat on this, and for this we're going to be using K-Colors X100. This stuff likes to go on wet and kind of self-level. Not unlike Aqua Gloss. the K colors clears for a few reasons. First with this gloss is it really does level out extremely well. Um, the K colors also really likes going down on top of it. You know, like Steinal Res, it does feel a bit scary flooding it on like this. You definitely feel like the, uh, the airbrushing barbarian charging through. Make sure I get those things. There's also this hesitation of, it kind of looks like shit before it uh, fully sets up. It needs time to do its thing. It's one of those where in the past I've thought, oh shit, I fucked up my model. Because you spray it on, it kind of looks grainy and it doesn't quite seem to work. And then you look at it the next day and it's like baby smooth. Of course, watch I say that. And after all my experience with this, I'll probably come back tomorrow morning and look at this before I head out to work and it'll be shitty. <laughs> Just my luck, right? But yeah, the first time that I used this stuff, I actually dismissed it because it sprayed so... So differently from how I'm used to uh, 
other glosses. And so, my surprise when I came back and it looked amazing, and when it's done that several other times, definitely has me in a uh, trust the process type of mood when it comes to using this stuff. Okay, there we go. Now it's a matter of just letting this be for um, overnight and we'll come back and tomorrow it's bare metal season.